Hey, it's Curly, and we finally have the Triple Drive Booster release in the English format for Card Fight Vanguard. This set brings a plethora of reprints for several different decks. So today I want to take some time to go over each of these decks, asterisks, and give you a list as well as a rough understanding of how it plays. So whether if you're a new player or a returning player that didn't get a chance to play these decks way back when they first came out, we can all finally play Vanguard. So a few caveats before we actually get started, I said asterisk in the beginning because of the fact that I will not be covering Luan or Zedlands, I'll be doing those in some other way, shape or form later on, but in the meanwhile you can check out this video by Auto Orange where she goes over both of those decks. I'll also not be going over the promo grade 3s that are in this set, I'll be doing a separate video for those later on as well, mainly cut them for time and because I want to spend some more time going over those lists. What I will be going over are any of the main grade threes that you put in the ride deck that we reprinted in this set. I do have to note that these decks will probably be pretty outdated and power crept out by the time we get to the very next set, which is Divine's One, which is the start of a new era for Vanguard. So there's going to be a lot of new decks and a lot of new mechanics that are coming out of that. Some of these decks do get some upgrades going further. Some of them don't. I'll be going over those as we go through the video. But for the most part, I'll be giving you a base competitive list that just lets you play the deck. It won't be the absolute most perfect list so you can play around with it as much as you like but it's just going to give you a starting point on top of that i also have some information on screen that will maybe make things a little bit easier for you help you grasp how the deck works better so for example on top of me you'll see the name of the deck as well as an image of the main uh, focus of the deck the main vanguard below me you see a bunch of information here uh we'll start here at the bottom uh these categories here i have four different categories that uh, have a star rating next to them the more stars it has next to it the more the deck has in that particular category the less the less it has uh, the four categories here are meta which is just sort of how meta relevant the deck is currently right now in this format but also how much it's been in the past and how much it might be in the future uh, diff here is a shorthand for difficulty so it's just how difficult the deck is to play overall price is how expensive i expect this deck to be even considering the reprints um some decks might be really expensive some decks might not be and finally rarity just considers how difficult these cards are to get so if you have to get them from different sets if you can get them from this triple drive booster if you have to get a bunch of promos what have you then this number goes up then the last thing i'll go over is this sort of graph chart here this pentagon here has different categories um at the ends of it and then there's this little blobby guy that's going to point towards that category in a certain direction. So these here are the five infamous TCG playstyles that uh, are used in a lot of other card games. Doesn't really always apply to Vanguard as well. So I've had to sort of interpret them in my own meaning for the sake of this video. Uh, so try not to get too confused. If it is too much of a departure of what you're used to, then just ignore this com part completely. So up here, we have five categories. The first one here is aggro. Uh, this is just a measure of how much or how quickly the deck is able to put out its main aggression. So something that can uh, put out a lot of aggression turn two, turn three will have more aggro. Whereas something that needs to wait until turn four and onward will have less aggro, but will have more mid range, which is just a measure of how good the deck is in the late game. Uh, Temple here is how good the deck is at obtaining resources. The higher this is, the better they are. Typically, this is just going to relate to how many cards you can get in hand in a turn. Uh, control here is a measure of how well a deck can disrupt your opponent. So if they can retire, lock, whatever, what have you, uh, they'll have more of a measure of this. And finally, combo here is going to be a measure of how much this deck is piece reliant, right? And how much it relies on getting a bunch of pieces in a single turn in order to do its plays. The more of this that it has, the more piece reliant the deck is. So you can use this uh, information below me if you want. If not, you can just ignore it. Uh, I'll just be going over the deck and we can go ahead and get started with Mahar Nirvana. So the first deck we have here is Mahar Nirvana. You'll see the deck code here in the right of the screen. Um, this deck is used by the main protagonist of the previous anime, uh, anime, uh, Kondo Yuyu here. And it uh, focuses on this grade four here. Uh, the name of this whole booster is Triple Drive because these grade fours have triple drives. So it kind of focuses around printing them. What this uh, grade four does is that it allows you to one power up your units if you have uh, overdress units on your board. So that is when you take this hooded guy and put it on top of this red guy in order to activate effects. Uh, so that 
allows you after you do that to then power up your other units by this guy's effect he also says that you can counter blast one and either discard a card with the same name as uh, that has nirvana in its name either from soul or from your hand and then you can call back a grade zero typically your trick star so you can go into more overdress plays and also you can ping your opponent for one damage if they have four or less currently which is pretty nice uh, you also have this uh, promo here that allows you to skip ride. So while this is a grade four deck, you will be able to from grade three here, go into your grade four. You could only do this if your opponent is on grade three themselves. Um, so overall, Nirvana is a pretty decent deck. It's pretty easy to pick up. Uh, it hasn't really seen a lot of meta rele relevancy ever since it had its high day over in set four. Uh, it, because of that, it's actually been pretty pricey because it's a pretty fan favorite deck and a lot of these cards are in the higher rarity. So it is a bit difficult to get uh, so you, you know, it's hard to get not really so much worth it competitively at this point in time. There are some couple of cards that will be released in the future that actually support this. Mainly there is a Blaze Maiden called Cindy that it might help out this deck specifically. It probably works out a lot better with the other deck that we'll go over next. I don't remember too well. Uh, but overall, this deck is alright if you want to pick up something. Uh, I've expected it to be a lot cheaper thanks to Triple Drive Booster but it just mainly focuses on doing your overdress and then going into your grade four and then just swinging in. Nothing too crazy. Next up, we have here Nirvana Jiva. This is the upgraded form of the previous Nirvana that we went through, essentially, or at least the upgraded deck. I think the actual scenario is that the previous one died and it was reborn as this one here. So this one focuses on the same sort of thing. We still have Trickstar and these red guys, but what this does is that it does Trickstar, red guys, new red guys, and then a dragon as well in order to do cross over dress. So it's very similar, but it requires a lot of extra pieces, which is why there's a lot more piece oriented. Overall, the deck functions just about the same where you just want to go and do your crossover dress and get the benefits of doing that. Uh, the main star of this deck here is the Straw Arena, which is not reprinted in this set. It was released in the previous set, uh, set 13, but it is insane because it is uh, a unit that allows you to crossover dress. It also powers up your Vanguard and allows you to retire your opponent's whole board, as well as stand another one of your units when it's stood by your Vanguard's ability. Whose Vanguard ability is very simple. It can discard a card to bring back a prayer dragon and a trick star. You need both of these to cross overdress. And then it also just says when it attacks, you can counter blast one restand and overdress unit. So you can overdress into this, uh, have some other stuff on the other column, use this skill to stand this, and then this skill stands the other thing that you have and you get yourself five attacks. Um, it's a pretty interesting deck because it uh, kind of has all this crazy protagonist energy to make it work because it's just this crazy amalgamation about a different, di different skills and stuff but it actually works out decently well right now. It actually ended up being either third or fourth in our recent world championships. Um, this deck is not super easy to get into uh, and understand because there's just a lot of moving pieces and it's also extremely expensive for the most part just because of the fact that a lot of these cards are triple wear. Uh, so they're in a lot of different sets also, so they're a bit difficult to get. But overall, it's a pretty solid deck. It's a deck that will, I know, benefit the most from Cindy when she comes out and there's also an extra support card that comes out in set two which in English, uh, Divine Set 2 comes out for us in, I think, like August or Ju August or July, one of those two. Uh, so it'll be a bit while before this actually gets some more support. Next up here, we have Tamayura, which is one of the decks I really wanted to talk about for this video because just about its entire deck is actually reprinted in the Triple Booster. I believe it's the entirety of these five cards, plus this card here that I actually reprinted, as well as, of course, the Grade 3 Tamayura which is pretty cool. Um, Tamayura is part of a select section of cards that are part of a Cray Cross epic uh, storyline. And these cards have the ability of glitter, which is a fancy term for just saying that you have these other cards that can only activate their good effects if you have a Vanguard with a specific name and glitter. Uh, there's no Tamayura without glitter. But what this lets you do is that these cards are actually in multiple uh, nations. So this deck here, Tamayura is from Dragon Empire, but these cards here, you can actually play them in Dragon Empire Inn and Dark Stays. However, they don't do anything in those other decks. Uh, they only work in Dragon Empire when you have Tamayura, because then you can actually use this red text box here. Uh, what this deck focuses around is getting all of your dolls here, these girls in purple, into your soul so that you can call them out with Tamayura's skill. She has two skills. One says that at the beginning of your ride phase, you get 
5k you the player can give out 5k to all your front row units so you have pseudo persona ride or half persona ride then when she attacks you can counter blast one choose either either one card from dragon empire or just uh one of each of the dolls so this is uh Ririmi, this is romarian you can call out one each and then uh, in your battle phase to extend to have an extra set of attacks uh, these both have a skill that say when the other one is placed, you can Soul Blast to either put a card from your opponent's field into Soul or draw one card, which then lets you Soul Blast out these two gals. And then they say when they're Soul Blasted, you can Counter Blast one for each and call them down into their respective columns of matching different hairstyles, essentially. So the purple one goes in the column of the white one and the white one goes in the column of the uh, purple one. Uh, and that's the general game plan for the deck. You just want to get these dolls out of your deck into soul. So you do a lot of deck thinning and then use that to just get five attacks. You have an upgraded form here in the Willow Wisp Daybreak Tamayura, which is not included in the Triple Drive Booster, but is a sort of break ride where you need to go on this grade three and then you can jump into this. It's not a grade four, however, but it allows you to um, persona ride even though they're different names. And it also allows you to search an order from your deck or drop when you play it. So you can use one of these really helpful orders. And then it does the same thing as Tamayura, but without a counter blast and gives these things power. In the future, there will be a promo that helps his deck out. When that comes out, you can basically use, I think the same list, just remove this. Uh, and it just allows you to be more aggressive and also allows you to skip into your grade three sort of break ride for this. The deck has been, you know, Mechanically has been really strong. It hasn't seen as many tops as they would want to, but I still think it is a pretty solid deck just because of how it works into the current format. It's not the easiest deck to play because you have to sequence things, but it should be the easiest deck to be able to get since pretty much everything is reprinted in Triple Drive Booster. <laughs> then last for Dragon Empire here, we have ourselves Bob Sagra, which is a pretty big fan favorite deck to the point that she's actually always been really expensive to get, even though she hasn't really seen a lot of meta relevancy. What this deck does is it focuses on taking your Vanguard Bob Sagra and equipping them with these literal weapons here, which are called arms. So Bob Sagra has two skills. It says whenever she is armed, you can soul charge one and call a grade zero from your drop. The grade zero you'll call out is this trick moon, which is the main crux of the deck, because whenever this is placed, you can counter charge if it's placed in the back row center, which is nice. But also for each of the arms your Vanguard has equipped to it, this becomes an extra 10k so you can only equip up to two so this will actually be a huge 25k booster for either your vanguard or one of your rear guards she also has another skill that allows you to stow blast two and retire all of your front your opponent's front row rear guards and also she gets a crit so this is a pretty nifty deck because it allows you to remove your opponent's board uh every single turn it allows you to swing with a crit every single turn you have some pretty nifty skills here from these arms that allow you to pin your opponent for one damage guard with an extra 10k shield on your opponent's turn get an extra 10k attack on your turn and draw a card um allows you to uh i believe this one gives you guard restrict and then this one gives you the ability to retire one of your opponent's rear guards um so it's a pretty nifty deck it is a little bit clunky and it's not super easy to play. It's a bit peace reliant because if you don't see your weapons, you cannot do anything. And like I said, it's a bit of, pretty big fan favorite. So it's kind of hard to actually acquire the cards. But that said, uh, the deck is also a three attack deck. This is another deck that bun fits from that Cine that I talked about. Um, but it's a deck that a lot of people are hoping that you know, a little bit more is done with it in the future. Uh, it's a decent deck. It just it doesn't have enough output to compete or enough defensive input to compete with what's out there. Next up, we'll move on into Dark States here with what was kind of the face of the nation for a good long while in Bruce. So this is another grade four focus deck. I forgot to mention before, uh, for the grade fours, there's this card called Forbidden Dome that you kind of want to play for all of them. I don't have it on this list here. You can very much add it in. I don't think I have a valid reason for not having it here. I might have just forgotten. But what Bruce focuses on is having this mechanic called Final Rush. So both of these Bruce say that at the beginning of your ride phase, you, you the player, acquire this state of Final Rush. So this Final Rush allows you to activate the abilities of all your other units that say you must be in Final Rush to do etc. So it's just a state that you enter and unlocks all these abilities. But because it's at the start of your ride phase, you can't do it the turn that you ride. It has to be the next turn. This is something that happens in the late game. Originally, what this deck focused on was uh, being extremely combo heavy, getting a bunch of your super strong pieces together. And once you hit that final rush, you can just throw everything down and OTK your opponent in that single turn. However, for the most part, it's not really able to do that 
because of the fact that its rush is not as strong as it used to be. Uh, it did get this promo card, which is pretty enough feat that allows you to skip ride into the grade four Bruce. You don't really need a reason to play multiple copies of this because once you're on it, you're on it, but it doesn't activate final rush. So all this does is give you a uh, grade four with triple drive, which is good, but it doesn't accelerate the game plan in any real way. Uh, both of these Bruces have an additional skill aside from going into final rush. That's at the end of the battle that they attack. This one says Soul Blast 5. This one is Soul Blast 5 Counter Blast 1. This one stands two of your front row units. Um, your units, and then this one stands front row units and it sells it and gives itself minus two drive. Uh, so that's generally what you want to do is just power up your super beefy units, then re-stand them and attack again with them, wear your opponent down. It hasn't seen a lot of meta relevancy, unfortunately. It's just like with Mahar Nirvana, since it's high day, it's kind of come down. Um, it's not the super easiest deck to play either. Uh, it should be relatively cheap, I think, because not a lot of people are into playing this deck anymore. But it does have support from a lot of different sets, including promos and whatnot, so it might be a bit difficult to get everything. But uh, that is Bruce. Next up, we have here Drag Jewel, which is one of the strongest decks, I think, that we'll be covering in all of this entire set here. Drag Jeweled here is the grade 3 that also re received a grade 4. But the grade 4 is not reprinted in this set because it just came out in set 13. The main focus of Drag Jeweled is getting several different cards with different grades into your soul. So you can use the ability of your Drag Jeweled. This one needs 4 different cards with different grades. Uh, this one needs 5 different cards with different grades. But when you do so, this one says that you can reduce your opponent's attack to 1. And if you're going second, or I should say if they're on grade 3, you get a crit. Uh, and then that also activates the skills of a lot of your other cards. Like this guy gets power if you have different grades. Uh, and then when you Soul Blast, you can restand it. This says uh, same thing. When you Soul Blast, you can restand another unit. Uh, and so on and so forth. But then the grade 4 version here allows you to do the same thing, except it has two extra parts. So one, at the beginning of your battle phase, you can put two cards from your drop into soul and give your front row units an additional 15k power. So it scales up really nicely, and it's also a vanguard with triple drive. In addition to that, while it requires you to soul blast five cards with different grades, your direct jeweled cards count as whatever grade you want them to be, and also it makes your opponent's front row into zero attack and retires their back row. So this is a deck that's seen a lot of success because it is very hard to survive that turn when your vanguard's at zero power. It makes it extremely difficult to guard, especially when there's five really big attacks coming at you. This also gains a crit. So this deck has actually seen quite a lot of success. Uh, you might actually see it right now if you're going to locals. And it actually got either third or fourth in worlds. Whatever Jiva did, it did the opposite. Um, so it's actually a really strong deck. It's not looking like it's getting any support anytime soon, however, but I wouldn't be surprised if we do see something like that soon. But this is a very sort of like late gamey deck. It doesn't really do too much early game. Uh, so it's definitely a sort of uh, uh, mid-range deck. Also overall, the deck has been really expensive to get the pieces for. Because a lot of these cards uh, have been really expensive for a decent amount of time. I think this one actually went down. But uh, this was pretty expensive because it's a promo and of course it's a grade 4. So it uses Forbidden Adult which is extremely expensive. Um, but since this and this were reprinted in this set, hopefully the value of the deck goes down. Next up here we have for Dark States is Chaos. So he's another one of the Kray Cross Epic guys with the Glitter ability, where his partner here is Mikani. This one and also this one. The reason the list looks like this a lot different than the other ones is that Chaos is a Highlander type deck. Highlander means that you benefit from playing multiple different names of cards in your deck or single copies of cards in your deck. Um, so Chaos's skill, his main skill is that when he attacks, if you have eight or more cards with different grades in your soul, you can uh, choose one of your units and it gets 10k. But if you have 13 or more, you can choose all of your rear guards except himself and give it 10k. So it gives you Persona Ride for the whole board. Uh, and you can do this on turn three if you achieve this. Um, this deck plays a lot of grade ones to try and soul charge as quickly as possible and get a lot of different names into your soul and then rush down your opponent because you have things like this guy and this guy can, that can get kind of big in general just ramming into your opponent with grade ones is pretty strong. So it's a very aggro type deck but it's also very combo focused because you need to see this guy 
because he says whenever your chaos attacks he can re-stand in order for him to attack again but then he goes back into soul at the end of that turn so you can combo that with the fact that this gives you power as well as this order card here which allows you to power up and as well as call out one of your mercani so they get an additional 10k and then also you can use uh, the queen lu here in order to make it so that when this guy attacks your opponent cannot guard a grade one or greater cards so that's kind of what you want to go for and then if you manage to get something like this over trigger you kind of you know win the game almost because you have two guaranteed attacks for the most part since this says you can't call pgs and then this says you can't card normally because it's 100 million power um one card that's really good that got reprinted here is this uh, go off makani here because of the fact that he was extremely expensive for a long time so now he's reprinted he should be playable in this deck this deck also has an upgraded grade 3 version here the break rider that i've been calling it uh it'll also be receiving a promo in the future much like the uh tamira that we talked about but this guy says uh, a lot of things. He allows you to on ride Soul Charge 3 if you'd like. So if you need to reach that Soul Cap, uh, he activates Persona Ride. And he also says that when he attacks, if you have different names, you can buy him the original copy here and then give everybody 10k, including himself. And he gets himself a crit, which is uh, pretty good. So that's 10k on top of the Persona Ride as well. So this is a deck that focuses on getting as much soul as possible. Uh, then using your mechanics to just win the game as quickly as possible because you will deck out pretty easily. This is definitely not an easy deck to play. It also has not seen a lot of meta relevancy, unfortunately. Uh, it shouldn't be too expensive because a lot of the cards are just one-offs, but it might be kind of hard to get all of these different cards. Next up, we'll go over Prison or Seraph Snow or Seraph Pure Light here. This is the premier control deck in all of, basically all of Vanguard for the most part. So this deck focuses on using this card here, which is a set order that goes into your order zone, and it is a unique card in that it is called a prison. What this does is that then it enables all your other cards that uh, have effects that say, choose your opponent's units, put them into your order zone. So you literally take their cards, put them in prison. And in order to get them out, they have to pay a cost. They have to literally pay bonds to get their cards out of prison. The cost being either Soul Blast or Counter Blast 1. So this not only restricts your opponents from using their own units, but it also forces them to use costs for things they'd rather not do, so that they can't use, for example, Counter Blast for the Vanguard skill, because then they have to use it to bail out their units. The main corner piece for this deck here is the Seraph uh, Pura Light here. She says whenever she's rowed, uh, you can remove either a copy of the original one or herself from Soul, Counter Blast, Soul Blast, specifically that copy, and then your opponent chooses two cards from their field, two cards from their soul, and two cards from their hand to put into the prison. So that instantly wipes your opponent of six resources there. Then it also says that based on the number of cards in your prison, you can give your uh, front row units power. And I believe once you hit 10 cards in prison, you can give everyone an additional critical. So this deck just sort of focuses on getting as many cards into prison as possible. I threw in this guy here just because he gives you a couple of defensive options for the deck because um, this is a grade 4 support card that you'll see in maybe some of these grade 4 decks. Uh, it says it has a skill whenever your Vanguard is a grade 4 or you have a grade 4 in hand. You have two different skills you can activate. One says on place on um, uh, rear circle. The other one says if you do it in guardian circle, they get 15k. And also if you discard it for ride for a grade 3 or a stride, you get to draw one. Uh, the on play skill for this does not matter for this deck but uh, the main one is the fact that you can use it to be a 15k shield. Typically what you want to do is just get a bunch of cards in your prison. Uh, you can use Cuff Spring to steal one from the hand. Litro says whenever your opponent guards uh, that card goes into prison. This says whenever some, your opponent calls something out from prison you can Soul Blast uh, 2 or 1 in order to draw one card. So that allows you to be a lot more defensive. This is the Skip Ride which is also one of the main important parts for the deck because it instantly lets you skip into this but also reduces the counter blast cost for this and also puts a card into prison. So this card is extremely good. This deck has uh, seen another resurgence. It was pretty me relevant in the past and then it sort of fell off. Then it came back again thanks to these two promos. Of course, it does mean you have to get these two promos, so that does make the deck a little bit more difficult to build. And it's also not the easiest deck to build by any way, shape, or form because you have to sequence your plays correctly to put the correct cards into play, make sure you push when you can, so on and so forth. 
uh, but it does have some pretty decent matchups against a lot of decks that don't have the means to play the cost here or don't want to lose their units. Next up for Brankgate, I'm kind of cheating here a little bit because of the fact that they actually reprinted a different version of Vorphis here. They reprinted the original one, which is not very good um, because this upgraded version is way better. What this upgraded version does is that it allows you to on ride. You can choose a, a set order, I believe it is, from your drop, a world order, and put it into your order zone. And then whenever it attacks, you counterblast discard, and you can choose um, up to every two cards that you have in your order zone, world cards. You can call a shadow army token, and this guy gets 5k for each of those two. This has an upgraded form in the mass version here. Here which is what we're going to be talking about. The original version just says you counterblast two to call up three Shadow Armory tokens. Uh, yeah, let's not do that. Instead, what we can do here and use this guy here who says you can counterblast one, remove, or put into drop as many set orders as you'd like. And for each of those set orders, this guy lets you call out a Shadow Armory token. And then also you can uh, get an additional drive if you do two or more. So you have a lot of cards here that allow you to play your uh, orders from your drop as well as allow you to put your orders into drop and also when they're called over with a token you get a benefit so this allows you to call another token this allows you to draw cards uh, which is pretty nifty so overall this deck focuses on these world orders here which you have to put them into your order zone but for the most part you just cheat on how to play it because you have this guy that says on ride this guy allows you to remove this guy here to then play uh, some of them from your drop so that's basically what this deck revolves around is these worlds, cheating them out, going into this guy, getting your Shadow Armor tokens, which are 15k grade 1, so they can work as boosters or attackers. This deck was pretty meta relevant for a good amount of time, but then it kind of fell off in favor of other decks. I think it still is pretty strong, maybe not the most consistent, but it can probably be um, you know, improved on by players. It's definitely not the easiest deck to play either, but uh, it should be relatively cheap because there was a deck set that allowed you to get access to a lot of these cards. Next up here for um, Brankate, we have ourselves Gravidium. So Gravidium is a bit of a tough one because she actually does have a mass version, but it's not very good. It gets support in the next set, and uh, I've tried it myself, and I haven't been able to make it work per se, into a point where I feel comfortable telling people to play the deck. So instead I have here a very old list um, that probably won't see as much use either unfortunately because of the fact that it's using very old cards. This deck was extremely good in its heyday but then because of this presumably it just stopped receiving any type of good support. So what this deck does is that it focuses on using these meteor cards here which are literal bricks rocks that you have to put into your order zone. What you do is then when your Vanguard attacks, you counterblast one, put any number of these from your order zone into drop in order for this gal here to get different effects. So if you put one, you get 15k. If you put three or more, she gets a crit. And if you put five or more, she gets the ability where whenever you drive check a trigger, you can activate the effect twice. So if you check a critical trigger, you can activate the effect of that trigger twice, which the effect is to give a unit critical, to so give critical twice, and then to give a unit 10k power, you give that 10k power twice. I don't know why I circled here, but that's fine. You guys understand what I mean? Um, she has the unique distinction of being the deck that can literally OTK anyone beyond any reasonable doubt there's no way that they can survive because she has the ability to put away five of these meteors and then check this over trigger, which doubles the power and crit already. So this doubles this, which already doubles which means this can sometimes just inflict 16 damage to your opponent to the point where it's just literally impossible for them to survive if they didn't guard the attack, which is near impossible um, considering if they flip this, right? So it's a very insane deck in terms of what it can do, but it can't really do that consistently. Uh, it also doesn't really have a lot of pressure outside of that. So if it doesn't check any triggers, really doesn't do too much uh, aside from having 15k and a crit. You can have your rear guard here have a crit as well as it gets 5k if something is retired and then it gets an additional crit if three cards were retired. But that's the general crux of the deck is just you play this, uh, you try and get your rocks out. Um, whenever she's rode you can choose two from your deck and put them into your order zone and whenever these are played by Vanguard ability you draw two. But 
it's a deck that really hasn't seen a lot of use. Um, it can still take some people by surprise, but it doesn't really have any of the tools to really compete, in my opinion, with a lot of the other decks that we have out there. Then the last Brand Gate deck we have here is going to be Eva, which is a deck that was, you know, very prevalent in competitive use for a very long time. And it's looking like it's going to see another resurgence with a promo card because this is one of those glitter cards that we talked about. So it will have a glitter partner that will come out that will allow it to skip ride into this grade 3 break ride version. Eva is a pretty interesting deck because she focuses on these rear guards here called Obscurbates here and calling them out from deck. They get an ability where they get an additional crit and power if you have at least three research cards in your order zone. So there's set orders that say research. Um, and she's a bit of a more grindy deck and able to thin out her deck to just check triggers and get PGs to last out the game as well as check heals. What she does is that she says, first of all, counter boss one, look at the top number of cards based on how many uh, set orders with research that you have. Then you can choose one of those, add it to your hand. So you can very easily look at the top three, top four, add a PG or a piece that you need. Then she also has a skill that says when she attacks, you counter blast, soul blast, uh, choose an obscurate from your deck or hand and call it out. And then uh, this guy says whenever he's called out by an ability, he can get an additional uh, 10k and crit if you have uh, this. Or I think it might be if you have specifically Eva. But he also gets an additional 10k shield, even though he's a grade 3 whenever you have Eva. So he's a really strong attacker as well as a strong defender because he also gets intercept. Uh, these set orders give you a lot of use as well because this one here the blue one says that you can look at the top five call something and that counts as something by an ability then this one says you can put it into soul to counter charge and choose one of your obscurates put it back into your hand so it gives you back the extra shield as well as some soul and the ability to uh, counter charge uh, the grade two one here allows you to attack your opponent's front row if it was called by an ability so you can actually have a little bit of removal so this deck is uh, pretty decent. It is a very, very solid deck that is going to see a lot of use, I believe, again, in the future. I would definitely pick this up, especially since a lot of its pieces are getting reprinted here in, reprint, uh, in the reprint booster, triple drive booster. It is a very good deck to have, uh, whether you're a competitive player or not. It's just a very good deck to have because it has seen a lot of success over its runtime. I lied. Uh, I might have said that was the last Brankade deck, but this is the last Brankade deck. This is Welsh Drum. So with a huge asterisk here because of the fact that this deck gets completely shafted next set. Uh, maybe not the deck specifically, but this grade 3 here will no longer be used in May because it'll have a new version that is way better. So it just gets upgraded and put out. Uh, so you can use this for now, but it will be upgraded and removed. The rest of this deck here, however, will be used in that new version. So what Welstra does is he's a pretty simple guy. He's the CEO of a company and they make these giant warships here called products. And uh, basically you have these products and then you have these engineers here that have the ability to operate those products. Once you operate these products, they get a special skill that they can use. And Welstra has two skills of himself where he just says he gets 5k whenever a product's activated, and also whenever he attacks, he can activate a product. This guy says here that when he attacks, he can Soul Blast 2 to activate a product, and this gal here says that on place, she can Counter Blast 1 to activate a product. She says she can rest herself from Counter Blast to activate a product, and these products have some pretty interesting skills. For example, this one here says that you can look at the top five, call up to any card from among them, raid less, raid less than equals your Vanguard, this one can call itself out and become a 10k attacker and booster. And then the main one here is this Freshholtz Maximum here. This card, you actually cannot play from your hand. You have to play it out by other means, either by using this grade 2 or using your um, Freiheit here, who allows you to directly play this from your hand. What Freshholtz Maximum does here is that, first of all, when it's activated, you can retire one of your opponent's rear guards and make your opponent lose 5k power from their vanguard to the end of the turn. On top of that, you can counterblast one, pick up a card that's on your board, add it to your hand, and then call this out as a 23k attacker. So that gives you an additional attack that way. So typically what you'll do is you'll use this guy, typically two of these, go use this effect in order to retire, minus your opponent, 
don't use the second skill, then use another copy of this to use the skill of Gen. Uh, use both skills and then use the third skill to counter blast, return the first guy back to your hand, and then use Welcher's final skill here to then do this operate again, then return the last of this guy to your hand. All while every time you operate, Wellstar gets bigger and your opponent gets smaller, making it much more difficult for them to guard, as well as them using, um, losing all of their board. So it was a very strong deck. It was actually pretty competitively viable for a good while, but it kind of fell off, mainly because of the fact that if you do not see this guy or if this goes into your damage, you kind of insta lose the game for the most part because you're not really able to do anything. So it's extremely combo oriented. Uh, it was extremely expensive for some time now. It's going to be a lot cheaper um in the interim because this will get reprinted this was really expensive for really no good reason but all these other pieces might end up going up uh in the future just because of the fact that the new version is coming out so if you want to play the new version if you like what i explained here pick up the majority of these cards i would say pretty much all of these cards are used except for this guy here uh this one sees some fringe play and these guys don't um Pick up everything else and you'll be able to pick up the new version with just maybe adding three new cards. Then next up here we have Keter Sanctuary here. This will be kind of quick because of the fact that we only have three decks to go over here and I'll explain why when I go over the next decks. But one of the reasons is that we got ourselves a grade four Bastion here reprinted but we're not actually focusing around that. We're actually focusing on its evolved uh, version here in Bastion Accord. Bastion Overall, it's a deck that focuses on having grade three units on your board to, you know, sometimes a lot of success. It's definitely a very explosive deck, but it has really no early gameplay and it has no real way in general to protect yourselves. Uh, it's evolved a little bit past that where now we have the Bastion Accord. So first of all, he counts as the original Bastion. He also has a skill that all your front row grade threes get additional 5k power and cannot be targeted by your opponent's effects. So he protects your units. And on top of all of that, he also has a skill that says when he attacks, uh, you can choose one of your other units, re-stand it, and it can get the ability that it can counterblast one, discard a bastion in order to get drive checks. So you can actually get four drives in a turn, you know, to, uh, two from this, and then two from, let's say, another grade three that's attacking. Uh, so this deck is very explosive in the late game because of the ability that it can just you know, get all these huge grade threes out that just swing for a lot and have drive checks. Uh, on top of that, they're a lot more defensive now because they have a grade three uh, here in the Owl, which is actually a grade one, so access shield. Then they have this grade three, which is the grade four support that they can use with the Bastion here uh, in order to get shield. The grade four Bastion Prime here, you can actually go into as a finisher. You mainly use it as the cost for this, but you can skip into it if you'd like with this skill here after you Persona Ride, in order to go into this guy, who says, uh, basically, whenever he attacks, if you drive check a grade three uh, or greater, you can uh, Soul Blast out or discard a copy of either Bastion to restand all of your grade three units and give them 10k. So that's a huge, massive output of attacks. Uh, I probably went a little bit way too conservative here in the mid range, but it's probably not accurate, so you can probably put this out a lot more. This was a deck that was extremely meta relevant for a good amount of time. It kind of fell off in the English version, at least, for not too much of a reason. Oh, I, I think it's still a really good deck. That being said, it's not really getting any support anytime soon that we know of. It is also the, one of the easiest decks to play because it's really straightforward. Uh, but it has been really expensive just due to the fact that it is a bit of a fan favorite. Next up here, we have Youthberg. This is undoubtedly the most expensive deck in all of this format for a good while. This reprint will hopefully change that. But part of the reason that you don't actually have a lot of decks for Counter Sanctuary to build from this set is because uh, this guy uses multiple forms and they were all reprinted in this set as opposed to, you know, some other bosses or something like that. Uh, so Youthberg is a deck that focuses on using the Revolve form mechanic. What does that mean? It means you use cards with Youthberg in their name but have Revolve form. And at the end of the battle that the original Youthberg here attacks, you go into this other form here. So you get an additional Vanguard attack. And then they have their own skills that, you know, activate whenever they do this. Then they've gotten this upgraded form here, which is a new Revolve form that uh, gets more powerful if you have the previous Revolve form in your soul. 
So it says if you have all three of them, you get to activate multiple different effects. So one of them gives you a drive, one of them gives you a crit, uh, one of them allows you to put one of your opponent's rear guards to the bottom of their deck. And then if you have all three of them, you give your front row plus 15k. So it's a relatively strong deck. It has seen a lot of metal relevancy for a good amount of time. It is pretty, overall pretty simple because the deck build is literally just four of the cards that allow you to put these guys into your soul. This girl that gives you uh, drives, uh, the fours themselves, and then this slot that you can use kind of for whatever you want. Um, that's generally the build for the deck is very straightforward. Uh, it's Like I've said, it's been the most expensive deck in this format for a very long time. This, you know, booster should help it out. We'll have to wait and see. But overall, the deck is able to amass a good amount of resources from its drives and just being able to thin out the deck from these, you know, essentially breaks uh, in order to check its triggers and get really strong thanks to this guy powering up all of your units. Not to mention you can do that on top of a personal ride. But the last Keter Sanctuary deck we have here is going to be Thegria, which is another one of the Cray Cross Epic Glitter cards. Uh, her partner here is Maple, that is actually seen in a lot of other decks because her first skill is actually really good as opposed to the second one. She's actually the one that's in reverse, and she actually gets free printed in the set, which is good for a lot of other decks. Thegria is another one of the reasons why we don't have as many um, boss units in this deck, in this set I should say, because of the fact that both of her forms were reprinted. She has a third form here, but Thegra's mechanic revolves on using both the light and dark versions of herself in order to gain effects. What happens here is that the deck focuses around either having the uh, dark version in the soul when you use the skill of the light version or having the light version in soul when you use the skill of the dark version, but also they get a skill whenever you take the light version and ride it over the dark version and vice versa when you take the dark version and ride it over the light version they get an additional skill. Uh, then we have ourselves this version here, which actually gets its uh, promo next month, which allows you to skip right into this. This allows you to do quite a couple of things. Uh, it allows you to take a version from your soul, uh, sorry, from your deck, put it into your soul. So it allows you to activate the skill of the opposite one if you need to. It also copies the name of whichever one of these you ride over. So that that way you can um, one activate Persona Ride and also two, when you were to switch into the other one, uh, it doesn't break the chain because you have to constantly switch back and forth from the light to the dark. Then on top of all of that, it out allows you to actually uh, in your main phase ride into another Thegria. So you can be on this version here, use the promo that allows you to go into this here then you know you get your persona right all that jazz then you can use this skill here to bind i believe no binds herself and then ride into the dark version that you have in your soul that she actually allowed you to get from your deck so then that allows you to actually persona ride again so you get persona ride in two turns uh tw twice in one turn sorry and you can actually use this to power up your persona ride because it says every time you persona ride instead of drawing one card you draw two instead of um 10k you give 15k so you give 30k to your front row uh finally the skill of the dark version here is that when she attacks she can if she rode over the light version she can restand at the end of that battle and then the light version says if she rode over the dark version that you can choose one of your rear guards grade two or less and restand them uh so degra is generally a kind of difficult deck to get around because she has all these really interesting mechanics it's a really fun deck it doesn't do as well competitively, unfortunately. Um, it has this issue where it does have these massive numbers, but it doesn't really have the best rear guards available to it to make use of it. Uh, there's definitely a lot of different ways you can build a deck. I gave you sort of just a general basic build here. Uh, I believe it shouldn't be too expensive, but it might be kind of rare because of the promo. This is also a promo, but thankfully it was reprinted in this set. Next up, we have the last nation here in Stoikea. We'll go over Magnolia first which is like i've talked about a lot on this channel this build here is going to focus on specifically the grade 4 version i decided to not go over two versions of magnolia here so similar to bastion how we went over just that one version we're just going to go over this grade 4 version here magnolia is a deck that has focused on mainly just enabling your units to being able to attack even if they're in the back row so this deck can actually do six attacks because uh, mainly this version here 
gives you the ability that all of your units get an additional 5k power, they can intercept from the back row, and it can also attack from the back row. So whatever units you throw down, they can attack. Uh, what this deck really excels at is just being able to pump out as many attacks as possible. They don't get the highest numbers. Sometimes you can mess around with the build if you'd like to make that happen, but it has a lot of ways to also acquire resources because of the fact that this allows you to actually call out a card from your soul every time you ride it. The goat here allows itself to go into soul every time you ride a Magnolia, so then you can call out the goat with this skill and then put another goat into soul every time that happens. This gets an additional uh, plus 5 or a total of plus 10k. Uh, you have the skip right here promo in the ride deck because you desperately need to go into this as quickly as you can. And uh, you play this here because you can do a combo where you ride into grade 3. You use, let's say, this guy or specifically the um, Forbidadol to get these two cards. Then you use this skill to soul blast one, return something from drop into your hand. You can return this card and then you can go ahead and instantly use it to then skip into this. So it works out really well. This is a bit of a like toolboxy type deck because you can do a lot of different things and play a lot of different uh, cards in this deck. This deck will actually be receiving some support in the future. Well, it'll actually receive two new grade twos that help out the deck quite a bit, as well as a brand new grade two and grade one in the wide deck. Uh, we'll see whether or not that's played or not. I'd mess around with it a little bit. I'm still sort of on the fence. Uh, the reason we're playing this guy, this is the Ranker Chain, is because he says whenever you are uh, him as the Vanguard, you Soul Blast 1, draw 2 cards, discard in order, if not discard 2. So this allows you to very easily dig into your deck to make sure you see either this guy here, the Forbidden Doll, or the Great Force, you can actually go into it. Next up here we have ourselves, Mass Zorga. So I have to give you the kind of the same um, caveat that I gave you for Wellstrap, because this will also be upgraded in the near future, it's later on from the Welster one, because Welster is updated in set 1, you get to perform, whereas um, set 1, set 14, if you want to call it that, set 15, set 2, uh, Zorga gets his new form. However, you might end up using Zorga Mask in that build, or at least you can. You know, the jury's still out on that. But Zorga here is a deck that focuses on using order cards. In the game of Vanguard, you can only use orders once per turn per the rules right now. But Zorga has the ability to circumvent that because he has a skill called Alchemagic, which lets you use an additional order in a turn at the cost of binding one of those orders. So your main game plan is using your orders to get their effects of whatever they may do, being able to do two of them in a turn as opposed to your opponent, and then mainly using it with this guy here, which is the Roaming Prison Dragon, which says whenever you play an order, you can call this out from your drop, and you can choose to either get 10k or and a crit, but if you um, played it uh, orders through Alchemagic, you can get both. So this becomes a nice attacker that gets, you know, a crit as well. And that's the main win con of the deck is to be able to get this dragon out with a crit to push your opponent. You have the Zorga Mask here, which is an upgraded version, which uh, similar to the other mask versions we went, up to, went over, you have to use this mask, which is an order, so it works really well in this deck to go into this guy here, who has a bunch of different effects. Uh, he can um, use your Persona Ride. If you Alchemagic, your Frontal gets plus 10k. You remove the original version to add either, I believe it's just an order from your drop back into your hand. And also, uh, when you Alchemagic, you can Alchemagic with something from your uh, drop, I believe it is, or your hand. Might, you know, something from your drop, um, which is really good. And it also has a lot of really good cards, such as the Philander here that allows it to uh, actually put the top five one of them into your drop. This is a deck that's kind of extremely complicated to play. It's definitely not the easiest deck in the world. There's so many different branching paths, and there's so many different ways you can build the deck as well as play even the same version of the deck. Uh, because you can do a lot of crazy little combos, like uh, you can use this guy which instantly lets you put an order into your drop, which means you don't have to worry about searching this out, so you don't have to put a searchers that search this out. You can also use the Forbidden Doll to get yourself your Zorga Mask, which then says after uh, this guy here, if you play an order, you can actually bounce a card back to your hand, so you can bounce this back to your hand, and then use the skill of this from your drop to go into the thing you just bounce into your hand. There's just so many different interactions that you can do here. You can be aggressive on turn two, turn one, thanks to the fact that you can play out tokens thanks to these mushrooms, and also if you play in order, you can get these guys out as well and rush down your opponent. So this is a deck 
that has seen a lot of competitive success, even as soon as it was... I, I want to say as soon as it was introduced, but it's seen a lot of competitive success lately, especially thanks to this mass version here. Uh, it has also been extremely expensive, and not the right pieces were reprinted in this set, so it's going to be still really hard to get. Uh, for example, this has jumped up in price thanks to the upcoming upgraded form. This has been extremely expensive for a long time, and unfortunately was not reprinted in Triple Drive Booster for some reason. So it is a very, very good deck if you want you to give yourself a challenge, if you want a very strong deck that has bottomless potential, this is the deck for you. Then we have ourselves our last glitter deck here in Aurora here. Aurora is a deck that focuses on getting plant tokens. Plant tokens, uh, we've touched on it a little bit briefly in Zorga, but they're tokens that you play from outside of your deck. You can play them at any point as long as something says get a plant token. They are 5k grade zeros. What this deck mainly focuses on is using those plant tokens to one, use it for your, you know, Roro skill if you'd like. He says on your opponent's turn, you can retire them to get an additional 5k attack for that battle so you can protect yourself a little bit. But mainly, it's used with this girl here, Raylinda, which is the glitter partner for uh, Roro. She says, one, you can counter blast one to get a Momoka token, which is a different type of token. That token allows you to eat any of your other grade zero units in order to power itself up. Then she says, whenever your, um, whenever she attacks, you can Soul Blast one, get the power of that Momoka token for herself and then attack with it. So you add whatever power Momoka has to herself and then she can attack. Meanwhile, your Momoka can actually attack from the back row if you have Rora. So you have yourselves two really big attacks here that you can then emphasize with the upgraded or the grade three version, not so much upgraded, uh, uh, Raylinda here, who can actually, from your hand, you can essentially tribute both Raylinda and Momoke to play her, and then she gets mid-battle, you get extend into this, she gets an extra power based on what your Momoke had. So, this is a deck that is able to very aggressively do this from turn two. You can play out all your tokens and rush down your opponent, and this thing with uh, Raylinda and Momoke, not so much the grade three, but the grade two, you can do that from turn two. So it's a deck that is very aggro. This is our premier aggro deck for Vanguard for the most part. So this deck just focuses on using the tokens because they are kind of just free advantage. You can get these tokens out, attack with them. You uh, don't really care if you lose them or whatever the case because they're not really units. And then we have this upgraded form here with a promo that is coming out very soon next month uh, that you're gonna wanna pick up as soon as possible that allows you to, uh, when you ride into it, you get two tokens right away, and these tokens get the ability that whenever they um, get removed, you draw a card for each of them, so it allows you to plus a little bit. It also says that whenever it attacks, you bind the original version here. You can choose any of your glitter cards, typically the Momo Kid, so it can get an additional power, and give this guy both of those cards uh, 5k, and this guy gets a crit. So that actually allows the Vanguard to now have a lot of pressure. So you have a deck here that you can rush down your opponent from as early as turn one because your ride deck here uh, gives you tokens that you can use. So you have an extra 5k attacker or booster that you can use. Then it allows you on turn two to go into this, have three attacks, one of them from the back row. That can sometimes be 20k. This guy, uh, this girl here getting 30k as well. And then you can go into grade three, do the same thing, extend into this or extend into this guy that can get a crit. So this is a very, very rush heavy deck. Uh, and unfortunately does not do a lot in the late game, does have no way to remove your opponent. Rear guards doesn't really draw any kinds of cards. Uh, I'm here playing it a bit conservatively. I usually play something funky like a bunch of draw triggers, uh, maybe even no crits. But we're playing just three heals here just to get the extra crit pressure. Uh, we're playing this trigger, this over trigger, because what you can do is with the Momo kit, you can uh, give that 100 million, have it attack twice. Then it can give this 100 million, then it can give this 100 million, so you can get 100 million four times. Um, the deck is, you know, not the hardest to play, but you do have to sequence things correctly. It hasn't been meta relevant at all, but it has been secretly really good just because of the fact that it is super aggressive. So it's really high rolling. So if it pops off, it pops off. And if it doesn't, it's a wet noodle. Uh, but it should be relatively cheap after all of these reprints. Then we have the very last deck here, which is possibly tied with Drag Jeweled, maybe stronger than Ned Jeweled or uh, stronger might not be the right word, but more competitively viable than Drag Jeweled in Leonorn. She had a good amount of her cards reprinted here. Um, however, it's not going to be enough for this build specifically, so it's going to be kind of expensive. Kind of hard to get to because you have yourselves one, 
two promos here, a card that's pretty expensive, a card that's become kind of expensive, and then another promo. But Leonoid as a deck focuses on having all of your back row units boost your Vanguard. So you get a huge Vanguard swing that can also get triple drive. Then you have yourself the mass version here of Leonorn, which allows you to uh, do the same thing, but then it allows you to restand your front row units. You can get five attacks or technically any units that you want. Whereas the original version only allowed you to restand your back row units after you boosted with her. And then you had other ways to get extra attacks, but this makes it a lot easier. And plus you have the added benefit of it being a mass deck. So you can get Persona Ride if you go second. On top of that, there is a third form of Leonorn here which is the uh, unison dress, the Marchette Floor uh, Lillian, or Lillian, Leonor and Vivance here. This version is kind of insane. You can only use this on turn uh, four. Uh, it's not a grade three, however, but you can only use it on turn four. And it says, basically, you take all of your units and they boost your Vanguard. Uh, so this is an insanely huge Vanguard swing. Even if they boosted or attacked already, you restand all of them and they all boost it. Uh, I think even if they don't have boost, they get boost for that one attack. Uh, so this is a huge swing. And then after that, you can choose, uh, I believe, your whole front row or three different units and restand him. And if you choose her, she loses a drive. So you get an additional Vanguard attack on top of that. Um, the main, main thing about this deck is that you can use a lot of the tokens, thanks to this Rosarian Fairy here, who says, on place, retire. A, re a unit to get two tokens so you can do the same strategy as Rora be extremely aggressive in the early game here using this to get you know the free advantage with tokens and whatnot and then uh, you can go even if you go second you have the capability to go into the mass so you still get the aggression here and then you can close out the game with this in the late game this deck kind of does about everything and it's not super piece reliant it kind of is but it doesn't really need that many specific pieces to do it even if you just have random cards you can kind of go off uh but it has just no way of control that's the only thing that this deck doesn't have uh but this deck can literally be aggressive turn one turn two turn three turn four if you you know get the right cards it also has a capability to be extremely strong thanks to the fact that this guy again can also say that um when it attacks choose another unit and it gets its same power so it's very similar to aurora in this case uh typically what you do is this fella here who gets um, boost, he's a great two with boost, and he gets power. So you can put all of your power diverted into this, and then use your two copies of this in your front row to then copy this thing's power to get huge. And then when you go into this, that's like five different huge attacks. So this is a very strong deck here. Uh, they got a new promo that helps it out with consistency because of the fact that it allows you to, I believe, if you have this version or you reveal it from your hand or something like that, you can Soul Blast call something out from your drop. So it allows you to have that recursion to be more consistent. And I think she goes to Soul to Counter Charge. I, this card is kind of new. I don't know it off, off the top of my head. I'll have it on screen so you guys can take a look at it. But this is an insanely good deck. Whew, that was long. Uh, and, you know, that's going to be every single deck. Like I said, I'll talk over some of the other ones later on in the future. Uh, for every build I've shown, like I said, it's the base competitive build. You can definitely mess around with it a lot. The triggers on static, you can mess around with that as well. Um, and, you know, overall, I just hope this video helped. If you're trying to get into Vanguard or trying to try out a new deck, you have some sort of baseline to work with. Uh, the triple drive booster should help out a lot with that. Unfortunately, I hope a lot of these decks get a little bit more support in the future. It's not to say none of them will. It's just as of right now, they're sort of focusing on a lot of the newer stuff and some of the other decks. So they kind of reprinted these as sort of like the old guard as we go into the new generation with the vines. Um, so if you do get these decks, don't be too discouraged. Uh, you can probably use some of those pieces in other decks if you want to. But I wouldn't be surprised if these get some sort of support in the future, especially since these are a lot of... Um, anime focus decks so they're important in the anime so they're bound to get support in some way shape or form in the future because uh the company really likes these decks for the most part i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments what you think but till the next time take care of yourselves and each other play vanguard and have yourselves a damn good one